drive across the city. Recording an album is a strange alchemical process. So many parts unite to make a whole, and that whole is a set of songs, notes, chords, words, instruments, and people. And my new album, Simple Complex, brought a lot of great people together in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And I think, in a way, loving yourself and finding good community is what this album is sort of all about. Oh, hey. What's going on, you? I'm um, just about to start my first day of recording here in Dartmouth in Joel's studio. I don't know why I'm doing this weird bent-over shot, but... Uh, thought I would film more of it, maybe make something out of it, I don't know. But I'm going to go get some decaf and get started. Much love. I made my first solo recording in my parents' basement with one microphone when I was 25, but I thought maybe I should reach out to someone who could make my song sound even better. And Charles Austin and myself made my first real album together in Halifax in 2001. So it was really special to make this record with him 20 years later. There was definitely a crunch to this project. We really only had a week in Dartmouth. I mean, I flew out there and I had to fly back. So it was either like in seven or eight days we get an album done or we don't. And that did add some pressure to the project, but I think it also escalated everyone else's creativity. So many different aspects of recording and one of them was being in the vocal and acoustic booth. And here you felt like a bit of a prisoner locked away from the other players because it's very hard to see. There's a window in front of me where you could see that shot where the other players are playing, but it's really hard to get any visual cues established because you're, you're pretty far away. We're trying to do a take of Graven here and we fucked it up, but then we uh, sort of had to come up with the system. Yeah, one more. I'll try and give you a big that like this when we'll go into the beat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> One of the fun things about this record also was really just seeing all the sonic layers come together and I mean all the different synths, different guitar parts, distorted bass, um, omnichord, and a lot of that was Charles. And so it was so fun to just watch him run wild on this record. Blustery, blustery. It was always lovely to get out and check out Dartmouth. I love that town so much because you spend a lot of time looking at these beautiful hardwood floors, the lovely cinder block walls, that beautiful console. There's Charles grooving out. And uh, there's Alex on the board too, and he did a great job engineering this record also. But you spend a lot of time confined in the same spot, so you really appreciated the chance to just get out and Alex on the board, killing it. Jordan drinking coffee. <laughs> Charles playing bass, distorted. Roche. Charles was the only person I'd recorded with before, and I'd never met any of these players or engineers in person, but they made me feel immediately welcome we bonded pretty quick, which I think helped the songs fuse together so fast. Day two. I've been having some weird sleeps since I've been here. And I'm doing the crouch cam again for some reason, but uh, gotta get her done. I'm gonna do, finish off the last two of the beds today. So acoustic, drums, 
We got six of them out of eight on yesterday, which is pretty rad. And then we're going to start adding some sounds and building with songs today. So good times. Here we go. Dartmouth. I like that. That's cool. And then maybe some shaker driving. Yes, totally. Some percussion. Yeah. 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 When you're in Joel's studio, you get a glimpse of a lot of his records, CDs, and stuff that he's worked on. And Aggie, so cool. Mo Kenny and Jeremy Fisher, Shotgun Jimmy, David Miles, the Just Because Forgot Gord Downey song. Pretty sweet, man. And here I am. With the green, the blue, I'm wearing the blue and blue, and Charles is wearing the yellow. Pretty sweet. It was really important to me that Charles was going to be a big part of this record and to sort of guide everything sonically, you know, the texture and the feel and the look. And, and oddly enough, I wasn't really sure in the beginning why I wanted to call this album Simple Complex. I mean, there's the song, obviously, and there's a lot of parts to it and the whole idea that loving yourself is kind of the base of everything. But even just the making of this record was something seemingly very simple you know eight songs you have a timeline but also pretty complex you know a group of guys who for the most part never really work together and there are times in the studio where you ask yourself what am i doing you know we're all getting older still making records still in this dance in this game trying to make it work um trying to be relevant and there are times where you question what you're doing and if it's worth it It was also really important to do it in Joel's space. And Joel and Charles having been friends for such a long time, I don't know, that was really important to me. And I've been lucky enough to stay friends with both of them over the years. And I've obviously filmed some videos and worked with Joel in the past. But seeing all the work that he's done, as you can see here, and all the albums that have been recorded, it was always amazing, you know, to walk through that coffee shop door to the back and to get to his studio and to walk in and just be a part of the action of this beautiful space. Charles or anyone else was playing, it was fun for me to walk around and just take in the sights of Fang Studios. You know, it really is a shrine that Joel has built to all things that are meaningful to him. Instruments, knickknacks, things he's collected, pictures of people. It just had a lot of meaning and I loved being there. Day three. Didn't even have, it didn't even have time to set up my usual shot. I'm going to talk to you through this screen. Check, check, one, two. Um, Laying down some more stuff. We're getting mixes done. Getting lots of stuff done after two days. It's crazy, man. But uh, really looking forward to getting these songs into the world. Let's go make some magic. For a lot of my life, I was told by different people to just give up music because it wouldn't lead anywhere, it wouldn't make me any money, it was just gonna be some sort of pipe dream, some sort of relay back to my misspent youth. But to come here in this place, which was so special to me, as a full-time musician, and to record this record made it that much more extravagant and magical. And 
as part of any magical thing, any epic journey, there are so many people that come together to make the whole parts of a record, whether that's two or three, or in this case, eight or ten. And one of those people was someone I'd never met in real life. But I was really thankful that he came. He brought his own finesse, his own style, and so many different instruments. I was so happy to play with Kev Corbett. Or is it like he's already doing that with the drums, right? Yeah, you can always do that. You can always, yeah. Just it adds, a, it adds some kind of weight to it or something. I guess I'll, I'm gonna go get Jeff Gay the Monster in a little bit. <laughs> Kev definitely brought a fun flair to this record, and I think at a point where maybe we needed a bit of a boost, uh, he brings his own energy. He played some really tasteful, beautiful pedal steel, but he also rocked the fuck out on the song Graven with his SG and was really just, you know, in the groove of the song, and it was really fun to see him bring these parts and to see the songs, you know, start becoming more real living things and Kev was a big part of that also on this record was a guy named Jeff Gay the monster and I don't know if that's his real given name but that's all I would call him because that's all Charles referred to him as he came in in about an hour and nailed down some parts really well on the keys and synth and piano and after that Charles and I decided to head out into the night and meet up with some of his friends in the north end of Halifax for my first ever Halifax Halloween. This was a really fun house party. That's one of Charles's friends. He's an artist. I forget his name. That guy was a pizza slice. There were lots of cool costumes at this little house party. There's a wizard. I think he was the DJ. And Charles is looking on, and uh, we drank this Nova Scotia East Coast beer called Taller, T-O-L-L-E-R, and it was really tasty, and uh, it was a fun night. funniest things happened that night is Kev and I went out for a little drink later at the local right beside the seahorse and the marquee. Um, Kev and I are about the same age and the bartender thought Kev was my dad. <laughs> feels pretty good. Um, we'll see. Ooh. Well, it's, this is an album, man. You can never get things perfect. point at about day three or four in the studio you're starting to see the shapeless blob of the album become something it's becoming some sort of sculpture and if you had other notions of what you thought it might be or what you were hoping you know it might become something this is where you're letting things go but also being surprised at how it's actually forming into something nicely and so this is always sort of a fun time number one might have been good too i don't know Take your vote. Yeah. Ugh. Don't record that. Yeah, I, I didn't. <laughs> Recording vocals 
for this album specifically was one of the weirdest experiences I've had in a while because it really got me into my head quite a bit more so I think than any record to date um, if there's any point if you have any kind of imposter syndrome as I do with making an album or just being an artist the vocals are the time where you're going to feel that because the foundation for the songs have been Working laid the weekend, and this is exhaust. really the final icing that you're putting on and you continually ask yourself am I a fool does this mean anything are these lyrics even worthwhile? Will anybody relate? Is it all nonsense? I wish you safety. I wish you time. Oh, I fucked up already. Right. Sorry. Beautiful blue sky day here in Dartmouth. Day four. Holy shit. Feeling, uh, feeling good thankful grateful it's coming together really well and joel is going to start mixing and uh, i'm going to go down and see what's going on in the studio Joel was one of the first famous musicians that I ever got to know, and he immediately made me feel welcome. He didn't make me feel secondary. You know, he wasn't snooty. He was just immediately like, hey, you're one of my peers. And we'd always talk about music, and he has this real wizardly way with music. So it was amazing seeing him mix these tracks and to see them come together under the care of his hands. And he just has a great idea of where things sit and where things should be. And he even added a great guitar solo on this song on Exploded. But after five solid days of being in the studio, I was starting to feel myself get seriously stir crazy, feeling the cabin fever fiercely. So luckily a friend named Tina was in town and we both decided to venture across the harbor on the ferry to one of my most favorite places in the world, the place where really my musical career began in the city of Halifax. Deep city dark And I'm searching for the meadow lark Nothing but old wooden telephone poles Some rest for this weary soul Paper and pen in the pine trees of County Road 10 Letting my thoughts illuminate with the moon Waiting on the call of the loon It's all Day five, six, I count Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, day six. <laughs> Lost track of time being out here, but the East Coast does that to me. It's a beautiful spot, and uh, today Joel's doing more mixing on the tracks. He got through about three songs yesterday, and um, I'm going to go in and see how it's going. And I think my friend Jamie's going to come and take some photos at some point, and uh, Charles will be by too, so it'll be kind of like the, the ending of the movie. Hard to believe, man. Here we go. Onwards. Because of the pandemic, being anywhere, literally anywhere different than where you're living was so special. And to be in such a beautiful place that started so much musical chaos and creativity for me was so amazing. And it really touched my heart in some beautiful ways. So this was all like a conglomeration of everything magical coming together for me in, in recording Simple Complex. Niagara was a hard verse. But like any story where you return to the scene of an adventure, and there's Jamie Chronic taking some photos there, 
there's a homecoming. And the homecoming is always the most beautiful, but also the most sad part of the journey. Because after this mountaintop, after this battle, this journey, this epic thing that took place, and all the plans and details and coordinating schedules with Joel and Charles and Jordan and Kevin and Jeff and Alex and Thomas and all the work and the fundraising and everything that went into this record as soon as all the work of that has been done, it's over. And you're home. Played a few tricks in my gambling time. Burned out some wicks from the bombs of my paranoid mind. I see you there, fields of dandelion youth. feels pretty surreal. Halifax is a special place for me and that was, uh, that was interesting. Beautiful. Inspiring. I need to sleep for a bit. But, I made a record I'm really proud of and I uh, can't wait to show it. Gotta go. I remember getting back to town and being in this Bank of Montreal parking lot and having this sort of Frodo at journey's end moment where I thought about what it all had meant. You know, you're just through this wild, unimaginable thing that's happened and you're sort of asking, did it happen? Did I dream it? But I know it happened because I have the songs and the experiences and all the people that were there. Then you're just back to your normal life in your kitchen. But there's one thing that I could take from Simple Complex, it's that being more of myself, stepping into me, will make me be the best musician, the best person, the best friend, and the best dad that I could ever be. So 